Hey, wrestling fans, welcome to the One Wing Wrestling Podcast, where we help you navigate the complex world of pro wrestling, bringing you the best matches, world class wrestlers, and news you can count on. At One Wing Wrestling, we bring the elite to you. My name is Christian and I, and joining me as always, Mr. Bill Cupbush. Bill, how's it going? Not so bad for a Monday. Not so bad. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, kind of weirdly cloudy outside and then sunny. And, yeah. uh, you know, I've been learning recently about these stages and building a home, watching the one go up across the street. Because, man, they dug out that foundation so fast. They got the concrete in there. Mm-hmm. They got the frame up. They got the house up. They even put a roof on it. And now it just sits there day after day after day. No one doing a damn thing. Once in a while, someone shows up for a couple hours. and like, what are they doing? I mean, there's a house. Kush and I were commenting on it uh, the other day, like just a few blocks away. It, it started after this one. It's nearly finished. I don't get it. I, I just, I don't get what's going on, but uh, I have this terrible eyesore of construction across the street from me, which is now thankfully mostly blocked out by a tree, but um, woohoo. Anyway, at least it's blissfully quiet, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. How was your weekend? Um, weekend was, uh, was, was interesting. I mean, uh, preparing for next week's ride, uh, me and my friend rode, 100 kilometers we rode from bloomington and warden we rode to um lake simcoe and then we we rode around lake simcoe for a bit and rode back and we got 100 kilometers in and man was that painful but i mean like the ride there wasn't bad i mean once you know 25 50 like you don't you you, you're good in the good zone the minute i hit the 50 i was like holy crap like like my legs weren't working uh, stuff like that. And then yesterday I did the DVP ride, the the DVP in Gardner, which totally caused a chaos for all drivers in Toronto. It was it was so much fun. Like honestly, if you want a fun ride, like I got so many kids on the on the ride with their parents, it was actually really really fun. It was for uh, yesterday it was for brain health. Um, really cool ride, really cool setup they had. Uh, so yeah, next week I'm doing 200. Um, still terrified. Uh, because like, cause after yesterday I was in pain, man. Oh my God. After the hundred kilometer, I was in pain. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, it, again, these things are not races. They're go at your own pace. Mm-hmm. Take your time. You know, uh, I, I, I saw, I saw people like uh, yesterday on bikes from all, all, I saw a guy, I swear to God, we're riding a tricycle. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw some, some electric bikes on there, e-bikes on there. Um, I saw this one father with like his kid, almost like in a stroller in front of his bike and he was pushing the bike. I was like, you know what? Everyone's just having fun. They're just taking their time. It was, it was, and then I, I think a lot of people are saying that, you know, well, the ramp, the ramp from the garden on the DVP is a pretty steep ramp, but it was, so it was fun. It was fun flying down there. The ramp back onto the DVP. Um, <laughs> I see how people can get intimidated by that ramp. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't bad case hey i made it up i made mm-hmm. it up the ramp right by just pedaling um switching gears but um fun a- after that once you were back in the gardener man it was a straight shot it was just like there there were times where you don't realize like i have a road bike and um people were again road bikes like mountain bikes anything they had yeah um but you realize how fast those road bikes are because i was like not even pedaling and flying by people i thought i was i was on the e-bike at one point <laughs> but um <laughs> but no it was it was it was a good warm-up for next week so yeah it, it it's uh you know what after next week i'll be fine guys i'll be okay again after next week i will not be in pain um and yeah and it, you'll have a story to tell and I'll have a story. The, I will have a story to tell. Exactly. I will life. have a huge story to tell. Yep. So yeah. Excellent. 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 No, I, uh, and once again, I will uh, make sure we can get some of your details about this ride in there and see if we can get uh, some more. Well, just more so everyone knows, there. like um, our, our goal. So, so to, to, to participate in the ride to conquer cancer, you need to raise $2,500 per person. Mm-hmm. Right. So right. let's say let's say I'm on a team and you accidentally go onto my page and you, you donate to the team. That money doesn't get dis- does get sent to each person. They don't they don't count that as a, right. great. So we each have to raise our own. Luckily, you know, from family, friends, so forth. Um, and we, we had all raised about close to like sixteen hundred a piece around mm-hmm. that. And then we had this raffle at work, like an internal raffle, almost like only like twenty people like really participated. But you know, people donated stuff like alcohol, and they donated like perfume and stuff like that. I guess mm-hmm. people wanted that stuff. 
and the tickets started at like like I think fifty bucks, and you yeah. got a couple tickets in hundred, two hundred. Right. And we all made our mark because of the, those donations. Every every single person that was on, that's on our team that's doing the ride. <laughs> Hit 2,500. So, so, so are, are you saying then it's pointless for us to put out more information if people want, well, want no, to continue I'm not saying to it's help pointless. you and I'm it's saying, a good cause? I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying it's a, yeah. it's a great cause. I'm saying everyone should should you know do their part. Um, I'm just, I'm just letting everyone know that there's no pressure on anybody. Of course not. There's never pressure to donate, right? I mean, <laughs> like I never feel pressure to donate to anybody. I didn't feel pressure to donate to you. I did it because yeah. it really is a good cause. I mean, look, my mother died from pancreatic cancer a yeah. year and a half ago, right? And, um, you know, you lost a good friend not that long ago. Yeah. And I knew, I knew him well enough. Yeah. Like I knew, I talked to him a few times. Now he was a good guy and very young. Right. Yeah. And it's cancer doesn't just affect old people in hospitals. Right. And they don't tell you what it's like to watch no. loved ones die from cancer either. It's True. it is horrific. So, um, yeah, it's a good cause. The more people we can save from catching this disease and it is now basically like pretty close one, number one or two killer of human beings on the face of the planet. So, yeah, it is no longer yeah. tigers, people. It no. is. It is. Uh, <laughs> we're sharks. Um, yeah. Nor is it plane crashes. No. Or COVID. Anyway, well, well, yes, yes. Anyway, yes. I digress. Um, <laughs> we are actually here to talk about professional wrestling, believe it or not, guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is our weekly show. We will be looking at some news of the week, and I think it's all interesting news this week. There's nothing I think that's really going to piss anybody off. Well, maybe that's mm. not quite true, but I think it's all interesting news. Um, yeah, and then of course we're gonna do our usual talk a bit about the, the AEW and the AEW uh, Rampage report. We're going to have a look at uh, a couple of companies in Japan as I journey down Bushi Road uh, to talk about New Japan and uh, Stardom this week. Looking at the Dominion results from, uh, especially the Dominion results from um, Osaka Joe Hall that happened just a few days ago. And uh, yeah, we'll of course be given our matches and wrestlers of the week. So uh, what do you say, Krishna? You want to get into some news? Let's do it. Okay. So first off this week, we have, now I just mentioned, I'm going to talk about the Dominion card later, but there's a couple things that happened on New Japan Dominion, because as we know, AEW Forbidden Door is coming up on June 25th, the best day of the year, since it is my birthday. <laughs> Dominion took place on June 4th. And of note, for AEW, New Japan, and Forbidden Door were two matches. The first was Will Ospreay taking on Lance Archer, of course, for the number one contendership for the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship, which is currently held by Kenny Omega, who they described as having taken the title hostage in AEW. Ospreay won the match, more on the match later. But after the match, Will got a mic. And he turned to Lance and he goes, Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> goodbye <laughs> then he says kenny omega and i mean his voice he was like yelling right remember me i'm the guy you left covered in my own blood at the tokyo dome you should have killed me when you had the chance because i'm back for revenge i will walk into your territory i will walk into canada osprey versus canada and i'm bringing back the iwgp united states championship and he left you know this is amazing and and sad at the same time. Let me, let me let me let me start with the amazing part first, okay? Okay. We're getting Forbidden Door. We're gonna get Kenny Omega Osprey too. Yes. Will, why do you have to attack Canada, man? This is this is my sad part here. Will, I love you. I'm gonna cheer for you. But I'm not cheering for you against Kenny Omega, obviously. <laughs> um, man, Will Osprey's coming in as the heel in Canada. I can't believe this. this is, it's gonna be, it's listen, all jokes aside, it's gonna be fun as hell. Like the like he will knows exactly what he's doing, right? Um this is gonna be like people are already saying that the the Kenny Will ma match at uh, um you know um Wrestle Kingdom was already match of the year. They're expecting this match to top that match. Could you could you imagine top that match? I know, right? It's crazy. It, it's it's absolutely insane. Um, I actually, if you would ask me who's gonna win, I don't know. I actually don't know who's no gonna clue. win this one. Yeah, no right? clue. We'll have like, to see what the build looks yeah. like going in and stuff. But um, you know, it, it's like we we were on the fence. We we're like, oh man, Kenny's gone to Japan, or we assume Kenny's gone to Japan to recruit for his uh, like you know, obviously the mm -hmm. the Blackpool Combat Club Battle Royale, whatever they're gonna have. Um, but man. Man, when we'll drop this, like 
it was Christmas in in June, right? I mean, yes. this is this is what we wanted. Slowly, we were thinking, oh man, this is not happening. And then it just got confirmed, and it yes. makes sense, right? So yeah. yeah, I'm 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 hyped for this match. Oh my god! Like, first of all, it means we'll probably get Battle Cry. Secondly, mm -hmm. secondly, this is likely the biggest wrestling match I've ever seen live in my entire life, and it may be the biggest one I will ever see live in my entire mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you know I'm wearing my United Empire shirt now, right? <laughs> just gonna be a fight in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get stuff dumped on them. Yeah, it'll be good times. Nah, the Toronto fans are always polite. Yeah, least, yeah, no. you know, We're actually a pretty good city like that. We're mm -hmm. kind of like Detroit. Surprisingly polite fans. Anyway, <laughs> um, we're, 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 we won't talk about Buffalo. But um, anyway, yes, no, I am completely hyped for this. I love the fact that Osprey is playing the heel, which of course just makes me love him more. Um, he, uh, yeah, this is going to be out of sight. I don't know what else to say about this. I mean, I mean, hello, we're getting this match. This, the, you'd assume this is going to close the show. You assume. But then again, Osprey and um, and Omega didn't close the show last time, right? Nope. They, 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 and, and the show suffered for that. But uh, I just... Oh, but there's, there's Con, more Con. coming up. I know, but Tony Khan, just... just I, I know I know it's coming up. I know. I actually watched the video before I... I um, think. Man, it, it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how you see the thing is I, I, I get there are gonna be big matches, but it, but could anything be bigger than Osprey Omega two? Oh, Osprey Omega oh, O two. Look at that. Uh, yes, like... Osprey and Omega <laughs> two. Yes. Is there anything bigger? Funny you should ask. All right, let me hear. This. <laughs> because though you and I may not necessarily think it's bigger. There may be people that do. Okada, Ishii, and Tanahashi at Dominion took on the mm -hmm. Black Bull Combat Club, John Moxley, the debuting in New Japan, Claudio Castagnoli, and Shota Umino for the okay. Never Open Weight Six Man Tag Team Championship. And Okada pinned Umino more on the match later. But after the match, Mox wanted a mic. And first of all, he had to be directed to where the mics were. Mm -hmm. Because he's like looking around, can't find one. Kevin Kelly tells him where the mics are. He goes and gets one. He grabs one. He speaks into it. Nothing happens. He grabs another one. He speaks into it. Nothing happens. He goes, look, I just want to and talk. <laughs> so the, the clerk comes over and turns the mic on for him and hands it back. <laughs> and at which point he says, a lot of people think the three guys standing in the ring right now, and he was referring to Okada Ishii and Tanahashi, might be the best wrestlers in the world. The Blackpool Combat Club disagrees because we train with the undisputed best wrestler in the world, and we bring a message, and he points to the screen. And then we get a hooded man in the desert, and that hooded man, who sounds exactly like Brian Danielson, says... The last 10 years, I've heard people talk about how great you are, the best mm. wrestler of this generation. I've heard in interviews that you want to wrestle me, fight me. Watching you, I know you're good, but I am the litmus test of great. He then turns around, and there was a big reaction in the crowd when he turned around. Mm. You want to wrestle Brian Danielson? You call yourself the Rainmaker, but you step in the ring with me. You're getting into the fucking desert, and there ain't going to be no rain. And that was the end of the video. And there was a big yes chant breaking out in the crowd. Yeah, uh, I saw I saw this. And, and here's the thing. Okada and and uh, Daniels, I, this match had never been done before, right? Correct. Um, for, forbidden Door's already blowing up. Like, I mean, you announced two matches that... Oh, oh I, I forgot mean, Okada's like... response. One moment, please. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Okada please, then please. says, Brian, I will share a ring with you. I don't care if it's in a desert or not. I can make it rain everywhere. The forbidden door will be opened. Yeah. There. Okay. Sorry. I forgot that. part. Now you can go ahead. Yeah. So, so I mean, like, I, I, I think that, you know, this is going to be um, a bit, like, as, as I was saying, two matches announced forbidden door so far. Well, I guess two matches. Is it two or more? Two or more. Maybe that. But remember last year, what the whole thing was all the injuries. Mm -hmm. Danielson injured, Omega injured, right? So they had to do what they could. And Forbidden Door is a fantastic pay per view. Now you're getting Danielson back again. Mm -hmm. and, and shockingly, going after Okada of all people, I was like, you know, I never thought about this match, 
but this is going to be a goddamn good match, right? <laughs> because, because again, uh, Okada wrestles the Okada way. And, you know, I'm, as I said, I think Okada is great, right? I was actually just watching a uh, quick snippet of like what the four, the four, the four match they had last year before Cole got injured. My God, that match was, was great. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, So he's, he's really good, but Danielson, you're adding Danielson into that mix. Right. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. I don't know what I didn't know I wanted this match. I never thought I would even want to see Okada versus Danielson. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in for this. This is oh. this is this is it. Yeah. This is it. Right. So dude, whew. I was watching this and I would just like, look, I'm getting goosebumps again. I'm just like, <laughs> are you fracking kidding me? Yep. Okada yep. versus Brian Danielson. Danielson. And we're going to yep. be sitting there watching it. Yep. Like it just. Wow. I mean, this is Brian Danielson's first New Japan match. Is it really? It is. Oh, it is. It as is. As far as right. I'm aware, as far as I'm aware, I do not believe the gentleman it... has wrestled in New Ever? Japan before. Ever. Oh, I didn't I didn't know that. Let I me verify that before that. I begin to lie to our uh... <laughs> But I mean, I am just super super hyped for this match. You have no clue. It uh, do, 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 do. let me check. I, I, I will I check. Just, I just made the assumption that he's like you know, being my uh, Brian Danielson, he's wrestled mm-hmm. um there before. Oh, no, he wrestled extensively in Japan. I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I thought he hadn't. Why did I think that he was released from WWE back in 2001 and went to New Japan where he used his American Dragon persona? He has never fought Okada. In Japan, yes, correct. Mm-hmm. Yes, his stint in New Japan was before it was two thousand one, two thousand four. He joined mm-hmm. Ring of Honor in two thousand two, um, but that's about it. And then returned to WWE in two thousand and nine. So he was only in New Japan for a blink. He was never in the G one, and he's never fought Okada. Okay. Yeah. So that's where it's at. So yes, he was in Japan for a, a blink back in the early two thousands before his career really took off in a big way. So. That might also be why I was like, he's never been in Japan, but uh, apparently he has. Anyway, that does not detract from the fact that this is going to be an absolutely phenomenal match, like okay. blow away match. It could easily follow Osprey and Okada, or Osprey and uh, Omega. But do you think it can beat Os? No, okay, okay. So uh, before I say that, I mm-hmm. got to think about this because I'm like, you know. It could technically beat it, depending on how the match goes, right? One match because they're they could be both totally different matches. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking maybe you know what? Okay, okay, I, okay. I'm good with this. Either one goes on last. I'm okay with that. Yep, because either one of those could easily be match of the night. And can yeah. you imagine these four guys? The fact is, both pair will be trying to outdo the other pair. Yep. Yep. I mean, that's, that's just going to be freaking crazy. So that's going to be fantastic, actually. Yes. That's... So Forbidden Door is shaping up to be pay per view of the year. Yeah. Oh, oh but, well, definitely. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I think as much as I, I, I love to see like the AEW pay per views, Forbidden Door is something you wait for, right? I yeah. mean, after last year, like, wow, this is fantastic. AEW versus New Japan. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is easily like right now, these two matches. I hate to say it, is blowing last year's forbidden door out of the water. Yes. Right. So, so I hate to be selfish. We're getting it right. So, yep. sorry. <laughs> it's sorry, not selfish everyone at all. else. Everyone else can watch it on pay per view that isn't there. Right. So, this is this is correct. Yes, they, they can exactly. they can do that. You're right. Mm-hmm. Right. Speaking of pay per views, I have a few notes left over from Double or Nothing. Um. You were aware, of course, that uh, NXT put a, a show directly opposing Double or Nothing. Did you know that? They had their big um, battleground I, I uh, yes, special Yes, yes. It, it, it was on Saturday. Yes. Right? They was, put, was, was, no, no, no. They Sunday. put it directly opposite Forbidden, or not Forbidden, or Double or Nothing on purpose. They moved oh, it wow. to a Sunday and put it opposite Double or Nothing on purpose in an effort to eat into AEW's fan base. Do you know what but, the net wait, wait, result? But, yeah. but but NXT tried to do this to AEW. NXT tried to do this. Okay, yes. continue, please. Continue. Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Guess what happened? They lost money. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> considering the show is free and it's on their like whatever their equivalent of the network is these days, I have no idea. Yeah. But um, as uh, Meltzer reported, that it would appear from early returns the NXT show had little or no negative to the AEW show, <laughs> and the decision to put NXT Battleground head to head with it led to people skipping the NXT show rather than hurting Double or Nothing. Um, as Meltzer stated, the lesson here is the same less quote, the same lesson of the last two decades. And that is that you can put a free show against a $50 show. And if people want to see the $50 show, they're going to buy it nonetheless. So, but, but okay. Now I have a question for you then. Okay. Mm-hmm. Didn't NXT try to pull this BS with, um, with uh, the Wednesday night war when they put mm-hmm. NXT up against dynamite? Mm-hmm. Did they not? fail when that happened as well how yes. is this even a thing like i'm so confused like why is this even a thing well, because AEW is in a bit more of a downswing than they were back then right they're a little more vulnerable right now than they were back then because you know they they they, they their ratings haven't been as good as a year ago they're not terrible they're a very successful show but it's I not as guess. good as a year ago well i mean if you really look at the ratings that is the truth um their, their ratings are lower than they were a year ago, but a lot of that can be attributed to the, you know, the big rise of CM Punk and the company and that kind of stuff, right? True, true. And, and now we're in a situation where that's not the case. Uh, you know, after last year, after um, the fallout at All Out, they lost a little bit of viewership and stuff like that. CM Punk leaving the elite being suspended, it all hurt AEW for a while. Right. That, but that, that, yes, you're right. You're, you are correct. I, I mean, well, but, but I didn't. Okay. So, sorry. Continue. Yeah. But, that doesn't take away from the fact they're an incredibly successful wrestling company and doing very well. True. So, I mean, they, they, they're by any metric you want to use, they are doing very well. So not a big deal overall. Um, but the fact is you're correct. Why would they bother trying to challenge AEW yet again? Were they just poking to see if they could have some kind of effect? I don't know why WWE does this. It's like, we can't, we can't stand having competition, so we're going to do everything we can to grind them into dust, even though having competition is incredibly healthy for the business as a whole. Oh, well, I mean, Bill, but Vince McMahon is not in charge anymore, is he? I mean, this couldn't be something like that, right? No, no. This is clearly a Triple H doing. Well, it could have um, been. Yeah, you know what? Like, I mean, <laughs> I I watch this stuff and I'm like, it's silly. Yeah, I it's know. silly. Yep, I know. It's it's. I don't understand why they. And hopefully, this will stop them from doing it again for a while. So, uh, I, I emphasize for a while. So, and that, that's why I was confused. I I didn't realize mm-hmm. NXT did put up a free show because I remembered uh, that on the Saturday there was that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was an event. There was a, a WWE event, right? And I thought, hey, you know, if you're a wrestling fan and you're watching WWE and AEW, you got back to back events. Yep, that was Clash of you. Champions from Saudi yes. Arabia. Yes, you got that in the afternoon. You got the uh, mm-hmm. the Saudi Arabia show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought, hey, this is this is good for wrestling fans, but hmm, interesting. Yeah. I I didn't even you know what I did not even know that I I totally mixed it up with Clash of Champions. Yep. So when you said like they NXT put a show, I'm like. Was Clash of Champions an NXT no. show? I'm so confused. <laughs> no, it was Battle. Now it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, another note from the uh, the thing: some Matt Jackson information. Uh, just mm-hmm. a, a quick snippet that I thought our fans might find interesting. Um, Matt Jackson stated that the thumbtacks in his heel spot was, and I quote, "the single most painful thing he's ever done." And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it was from the Double or Nothing pay per view where he literally got atomic bombed into, or, yeah. Atomic dropped into thumbtacks and taking all the thumbtacks out of his foot was rough as well, since some of the thumbtacks were actually stuck in the bone of his heel. Oh, my God. Um, Ouch. Ouch. I can guarantee you no one will do an atomic drop into thumbtacks again with a bare foot for the foreseeable future. No, and they shouldn't. There, there's, there, it, it was shocking uh, and also unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for Matt Jackson, who's been through a lot, ladder matches, ladders mm-hmm. and tables, all kinds of stuff that he's gone through, right? Injuries. For him to say this was the single most painful thing he's done in a wrestling ring, that's, that's nuts. Yeah. I, um, you know, it's funny because it's like, I'm okay with getting rid of thumbtacks, period. So, mm-hmm. Anyone listening? I, I, I know you hate thumbtacks. the thumbtacks. Hate them. Take it, take it out. <laughs> we don't need that. You ready for our favorite game show, Krishna? What's that? 
It's guess the stars. Guess the stars. Did, well, did you before you go continue? Did you hear about Lance Archer? Yes, yes, and his yeah. tricep injury, and his tricep too. Yes. His tricep tear. I was going to talk about that later, but I'm quite happy oh. to talk about it right now. Oh, no so let's no talk worries. about his tricep tear. Yes, in mm-hmm. fact. <laughs> Apparently he was wrestling for quite a while with a torn mm. tricep, and then um, he talked about uh, he talked about it after, and he said that his lack of booking has nothing to do with anything but his injury. And he said, "quote I didn't tell anybody because I don't need your sympathy. I don't need your get well wishes. I don't need anything. I just needed time, and now I'm back." Awesome. That was it. That was all I was going to say. Yeah. Like I, I love that response from me because no, immediately everyone starts thinking, oh well, you know, he can't be booked properly. He's no mm-hmm. dude had a tricep tear. Like he, yep. he, he can't wrestle. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, good on him. I saw that, and I'm and he's better now. He said so. He's yep. back. Um, yep. so that's great. I'm I'm happy for Lance. I like Lance Archer. I think he's the one of the 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 better big guys. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, trice. I couldn't. I couldn't even imagine. Could not imagine the pain there. Right. So well, you know who else had an injury that's coming back soon? Who's that? Pac. <clears throat> he had a nose injury that he got while Ooh. fighting that best of seven series, and that's why he's been gone. Is that why he was wearing that mask? Yes, he had a legitimate nose injury, and he decided to stick it out for the rest of the uh, the matches oh my for God. the best of seven. Then he went away to take care of the nose injury, and he is almost ready to return. That's where Pac has been. Amazing, amazing. You know, I I, I was like, is Pac on vacation or something like that? Because mm-hmm. hey, he deserves it. I, I, I'm not saying he nothing. He doesn't deserve it. But I, I miss Pac. Mm-hmm. Um, is he gonna come back for Forbidden Door? Fingers we crossed, can fingers only crossed, fingers hope. Crossed. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. We can only hope to continue to make this the best wrestling card oh. in history. No, I love Pac. He's so awesome. He's so like yep. legit, what like Omega level wrestler. He's so cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I I can't wait till he's back. Yep. Me too. It's going to be great. But now we can return to our game of guess the stars. These are okay. the stars from Double or Nothing that okay. Meltzer gave out. I won't ask you oh, all no. of them. You didn't see all the matches. I will just list a couple, but I'll give you a few. Hook and okay. Hardy's versus Page and the Guns. I'm gonna say Meltzer gave this the Meltzer rating three and a half stars. One and three quarters. Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! He hated this match more than we did, and we didn't hate this match. Really? Oh, I didn't. Though. I didn't hate this one. I thought it was yeah. okay. Yeah. I gave it the gentleman's three. Remember? One and a half. Yes. Mm-hmm. One and a half. That or that's one and three shocking. quarters. One and that's three quarters. Sho- that's yep. shocking, and that's based on just knowing how Dave Meltzer rates other matches. But yes. that's shocking to me. Yes, I mean it wasn't that terrible. No, um, the Blackjack Battle Royal. I'm going to say he probably gave this three. He gave it four and a quarter. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, he said this was great, and apparently the whole match was laid out by Tony Khan. Really? Mm-hmm. It was a good match. It, it was fun. Yep. No, and, and I, I thought it was one of the better battle royals mm-hmm. I've ever seen. So um, good on Tony, yeah. But I'm sure four and a quarter. Sure, why not? Okay, but no. <laughs> Chris Jericho versus Adam oh, Cole. No. Oh, no. Okay, so he gave one and a half to the Hardys. He gave one and three quarters. One and three quarters. He gave four and a half, four to... Uh, four and a quarter to the battle royal. Yep. Oh my god! I don't want to think about this match. Um, because I, because we did not like this match. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say gentlemen's gentlemen's three, <laughs> three and a quarter. God, really? The Dave? work was good, but the crowd wasn't into it. Yeah, okay. because the work was not good. That's why the crowd wasn't into it. Okay, here's here's one for you. Who do you think scored higher stars? And maybe I'm just trying to fool you. We will find out. Here's mm-hmm. here's I'm gonna, I want you to order these three in the order of stars. Okay. FTR okay. versus Lethal and Jarrett. Okay. Wardlow versus Christian and on the ladder match. Mm-hmm. House of Black versus the Acclaim. Okay. So so we rate we rated this mm-hmm. uh Christian and uh and um and uh Luchasaurus. Sorry, Luchasaurus. Mm-hmm. Christian and Wardlow. Yep. Um then we did the House of Black and then we did the yes. FTR matches. Yes. I'm going to actually go I'm going to say he gave FTR the highest rating here. FTR and the Jarrett match mm-hmm. followed by Oh my goodness, would he have given I'm going to say FTR uh, a house of black 
and uh, Christian and and um, Wardlow. He, you were that close. Order. You were close. How Wait, many... Let me guess. Let me guess. He switched the last two around. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, FTR and Lethal and Jared, how many stars? He must have given this like four and a half stars. <laughs> four. Yeah. I, I was, he, I, that's what I'm saying. He must have given it like yeah. four and a half stars. Yeah. He gave it four stars. Oh, Wardlow wow. and Christian, he gave three and three quarters. And the House of Black match, he tied with Adam Cole and Chris Jericho at three and a quarter. Robbery right there. Like, there's yep. no way Christian and Wardlow got that low. They mm-hmm. put on such a great match. Whew. Okay. Yep. Well, that's that's interesting. He rated it like that. That's yes, right. I know. This this is why sometimes, you know, Dave, we love you. But sometimes these stars, man. Sometimes these stars. But, he, but Dave also loves Jarrett. And he loves, like, He does. That, so, yeah, so yeah. See, it why. also comes down to the kind of wrestling that you and mm-hmm. I like, right? Versus, you know, I think he's got a broader base, shall we say, and maybe a slightly older style. Yeah. So, sure. okay. Cargill versus Valkyrie and Storm versus Hater. Which one got more stars? And what were they? Storm versus Hater, Cargill versus Valkyrie. I'm gonna say he gave Valkyrie and and um, and uh, Jade higher than than the other two. You are um, correct. I'm I'm going to say he gave. Oof, oh my goodness. So I'm gonna say be, I'm I'm gonna say because of the beatdown, that's why he didn't give that match like like the biggest thing because obviously mm-hmm. uh, uh what's the name um. Uh, uh, Haber Hater was injured, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna say he probably gave that match maybe I'm gonna say three, and he gave the cargo match. Um, he probably gave it three and a half. Okay, so you think he thought the cargo match was better than House of Black versus the Acclaimed and Jericho versus Cole? Oh wait, he oh yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Take it back. So he's gonna give it three, like a like a even three. Mm-hmm. And then he's giving the other one lower. So he was given a two and two and three quarters. I don't know. <laughs> he gave Cargill and Valkyrie two and three quarters. Oh, okay. So, oh. okay. So I was close in one of the oh. Storm and Hater, lowest on the show, one and a quarter stars. Wow. He hated it. He absolutely hated it. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good no, at all. No, um, no. I thought it was better than that because I I don't mind a good beatdown match. Yeah. Like I take that as part of the story. I'm not just judging it based entirely on the wrestling. But he doesn't either. You know, he talks about crowd reactions and stuff too. But but yeah, I, I thought that was uh, more enjoyable mm-hmm. for me than the Cargill versus Valkyrie oh, yeah. match. Okay, here we go. Four pillars match. Oh, he had to. He had to. If remember, I gave this match almost like a six out of five, right? Mm-hmm. So I would say Dave gave this match five point five stars. Nope. Four no. point four and three quarters. Okay, that that right there, Dave. I'm sorry, <laughs> you're wrong. You're definitely wrong. This if you'd given it a five, I'd be like, okay, cool. That that that's that's reasonable. Mm-hmm. No man, this this match is fantastic. Anarchy in the arena. I, so then I'm assuming he rated this one higher. Um, so I'm going to say he gave he gave so he gave this one. I'm going to say five. He gave this one a five. He did. It is a five star match, yeah. and he called it the match of the week. Oh, okay. Yep. So there you I go. I mean, I can't disagree with that. It could be your match of the week. Mm-hmm. Oh, 100 percent. It was a great match yeah. for me. It was the one B to the one A. Yeah. But yeah, great but, match. Yeah, but like overall, like those other matches. Oof. Yeah. That rating scale, kidding. Dave. Come on. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> but I have fun doing this because it just shows us like how different different people's opinions can be. Eh? Like, I you mean, know we what? Don't, we don't always agree. And that means, hey, our listeners probably listened to us right some matches ago. You guys are on bad drugs. You and I did not like the Iron Man match between Danielson and, and MJF that much. Not as much as others. And it was good. It was, but it wasn't. No, but, oh, my but God. Amazing. But, but but like people didn't like the pay-per-view. The paper. I was listening to a podcast where they were like, yeah, this was AEW, and they they called they called it something else, making fun of it because they were they were um, comparing it to like a pretty bad WWE pay per view, oh, yeah. and they and they were talking about the Four Pillars match being okay. They were oh, talking about the, the hell were they yeah, watching? Yeah, yeah, they were talking about the fact that the they're also saying oh the crowd wasn't into some of these things. They were talking about the uh, the Blackpool Combat Club versus the Elite being again okay. And I was like, what is happening? Did I, am I living is in a WWE paying world? them? Yeah, right. Exactly. But hey, it shows you 
Mm-hmm. How everyone well, has their own opinion, right? And it's different. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. See, I watch this stuff and I'm like, that was freaking phenomenal mm-hmm. wrestling, right? And it's mm-hmm. not like I don't have a fairly broad range of wrestling. You know, <laughs> so, that's true. You know, to me, with all the wrestling I've seen in my lifetime, right? Over what I've been watching it since I was like 10 years old, man. That's four decades of wrestling, yeah. people. So, uh, yeah. Um, so there's Guess the Stars. One more quick note before we uh, we move on. Will Ospreay's contract update. Mm. Uh, his contract is up in February 2024, but in an interview with Chris Van Vliet, Ospreay pretty much said he was most likely going to sign with New Japan. That had been expected because he's made it clear he isn't going to move from England due to family situations. Now, however, he could work out a deal with AEW, which would pay better than New Japan and still live in England. But he seemed to think that wasn't going to happen. And here's what he said, quote, I am very confident that me and New Japan are going to work something out because I just don't want to live in America. (laughs) That's my full stop thing. I just don't want to. He later said he's very confident he'll work out a deal with New Japan. Hey, I mean, if he doesn't want to live in the States, what are you going to do? Right. I mean, I I think I said this to you. The AEW roster is bloated. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you can get a Will Osprey, you get a Will Osprey. Yep. But if you can't, you can't, right? You have other people you can, yes. you can, and you have, this is why you have Forbidden Doors, this is why you have these things, right? Um, So I, when I heard about this, I was kind of sad. I'm like, damn, I was really expecting Osprey to join. But maybe it takes away some of the, like, the appeal to, mm-hmm. to like, Omega versus Osprey, right? It's like, these yep. are, like, like um, you know, things that don't happen every day. So I am sad but okay about about this i'm like okay that makes sense yep oh yeah no and and you know what i'm completely fine with it one i i watch new japan so like cool osprey will still be there that gives me a really good reason to keep watching new japan too it means the united empire ain't going anywhere um and they are the strongest faction in new japan so and the best faction yep as i will demonstrate at forbidden door wearing my united empire Mm t-shirt showing loyalty to my guys um but anyway yeah no i was i was I'm okay with this. I'm completely okay with this. You know, I also think part of it is his freedom. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to have to cut the kind of promos that he would have to cut at AEW. Not that he wouldn't be able to help write them. The dude can't stop swearing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And he he uses a lot of British swear that is really not appropriate in North America. Right. That's completely fine in Britain. So, you know, there are differences in swearing between cultures, too. And there are certain words the British use that North Americans really hate. Yeah. So and he he has trouble not using those words. So anyway, I suspect that might be another decision because he can just cut promos without having to think about it. But anyway, fair enough. Do you have a dirt sheet for us this week? Deny. No, um, the only thing that slightly came up was the fact that uh, CM Punk in the news as usual um was kind of saying he he wants to potentially and this is not really a dirt sheet like he probably wants to have a um a feud with like like uh adam cole and i'm like yeah like that kind of makes sense i mean that he's the only person it's not it's not it's like it's he's the only person you didn't insult during your your meltdown yes right you're the only only guy you're like the adam cole guy hope he gets better you know He's such yeah. a sweet kid. Um, I'm like, yeah, so, so that was it. I mean, there's nothing, nothing major. Surprisingly, nothing major. And it's yes. okay. And 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 the whole thing is apparently um again, as you stated before, like mm-hmm. uh, CM Punk and um and I and I was gonna say Ice Steel, Ace Steel, um, are basically going to be, and this again, dirt cheat material are going to be basically under creative for like the CM Punk storylines, mm-hmm. um, but but it, it is saying that that a steel is going to be remote, mm-hmm. <laughs> so so he is not going to. I guess Tony kind of uh, went on that one. I guess, um, uh, but apparently, uh, for most of the storylines with CM Punk, even in AEW, like a steel was involved. So, you know, his storylines weren't were, were pretty good. So so I'm like, okay, that that's fine. I'm okay with that, um, but. Apparently he's going to have creative control. I'm pretty sure it's everything is still going to run through his Tony Khan, so it doesn't really matter. No, it does because it's the same kind of creative control. It's not like WCW creative control at all. They they just like certain people there have certain say in their direction. Brian Danielson does. Kenny Omega yep. does. Right, the Bucks do. You know, guys like that have certain say in the direction of their characters. Right, but ultimately at the end of the day, Tony Khan has the final say, and it's not like written in their contracts and stuff like WCW where Hogan can go, nope, not doing that. We're changing it like this. 
Yeah, so, it's true. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. So that brings us then to the Rampage Report. Cool. Rampage Report. All I got to say is if you have, haven't watched Rampage, just go out and watch it. It was it was a great show. Like, it was a great, great show. Not, well, I, I don't even know what else to say. Like, like you know what? Every match was great. Like I, I was thinking about that. I'm like, well, this match was kind of... No, but it, overall, it, it, it was great. And and you'll obviously, you'll see the the uh, match I'm talking about. But first of all, we know Rampage loves to kick off with a with, with an absolute like amazing match, right? So Rampage decides we're going to kick off with the Triple A title defense of Vikingo versus Drillistico and Commander. Mm-hmm. This match, if you know who these guys are, these are like top luchadors, went as as you would expect, as you would expect, absolutely insane. Ab like there was a one point where I think it was Commander or Vikingo where they stomped um uh uh. Uh, I think Drillistico while he was hanging outside the, the the ring and stomped him from the top rope onto the side. And I was like, oh my God, what, what are you guys trying to do? And then when um Vikingo hit the his uh I don't know how many spins he does in that goddamn 630. thing. 630. 630 and smashes the table? Through, on the no. table. Oh, like like you know, I think I think everyone was saying like, you know, Commander may have messed up on who cares? No one who messed up cares? on that. The it no, apparently it was another move. He was trying to do like a little flip and he he didn't really hit it as perfect as you p- probably could, but I don't care. Like, I mean, I watched this and I was like, this match is my match. I <laughs> love this type of match, right? So this match blew me away. And that's why like going through their other matches, I'm like, I know like what match you might have loved on this one as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, and this why this, this was like, this blew me away right away. And then from here oh wait i got, I got a couple things sorry, to say about sorry, that match sorry. first yeah yeah i mean this this was the kind of episode of rampage where it's like i was all in on it so mm-hmm. um yeah yeah the uh that dude that corkscrew poison rana oh that God. vikingo oh hit what the hell was that <laughs> like, how do you even do that and and you know commander kept the rope walking to a minimum yep. but both the ones he did were Perfect, beautiful right. and yeah. hit perfectly I like the way Drillistico plays like the perfect big man to these two guys. I yeah. mean, he's he's like he's obviously the larger and the stronger of the three of them. And mm-hmm. it was just I love the way the match was put together. It was it was it was so good. I mean, that dodging roll sequence they did at the beginning, where they were each dodging each other over and over, rolling out of the way and back and forth. Right? Amazing, amazing, yeah. yeah. Amazing. It just the, the whole thing was just just freaking incredible i loved this match i would have given it four and a four and a quarter stars Ooh, so um, okay yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. solid stuff for rampage anyway please continue i may have comments on most of the matches no no worries no worries and please jump in when you can uh next up zach saber jr versus action and Dreddy. um for the new Japan uh, for TV the new champion, Japan. yeah, TV yes. champion. I was kind of, I was like, oh, I didn't realize. Yes, I, I didn't know he was wrestling, but I didn't realize that the title was on the line. I just, I was kind of mm-hmm. shocked about that. Um, this match, like, how many holds did <laughs> Zack Saber Jr. put Action and Dreddy in? I was trying to count. I just lost count. I was like, whatever. I, He's I the man count. of seven thousand and four holds. Okay. But his holds, the thing about his holds is they look painful. Oh yeah. They look painful. Like Action Andretti had some really, really good spots in here, but it kind of feels like Action Andretti is becoming like a really good, you know, just regular um, jobber. At Dante AW. Martin. Yeah, maybe because Dante's not available. Obviously, mm-hmm. injury. Maybe they they fed. I shouldn't even say they fed Action Andretti. Like they let Action Andretti wrestle um, Zack Saber Jr. Zack Sabre Jr., like, this is this is why I was a little heartbroken when it wasn't Zack Sabre Jr. versus Brian Danielson at Forbidden Door. I was like, what could have been, right? Um, who knows? I'm probably saving that for the, the show in, in the UK. Um, but, yeah, but, yeah, Zack Sabre, like, I, I don't even know what to say about this guy. Like, he is so fast. And this is the thing. Remember I, I always say, like, I, I like, fast wrestlers mm-hmm. like i like bret hart bret hart was great um but he's not as fast as uh, bret hart was never as fast as most as... of the guys in that era aren't as fast <laughs> well, as d- and different there. maybe maybe i'm making a, a bad comparison because you're right maybe that era just wasn't that there's just something about zach saber jr like i don't know if it's his charisma or whatever it is I, like remember i didn't 
even know about this guy till last year mm -hmm. until until you know forbidden door and you were talking about him so that i'm like who the heck is zach zipper jr i've heard the name right I never knew who he was i never knew why anyone compared him to to brian danielson and man this guy is so good yes. this guy is so good <laughs> Um, this match was fantastic. This match was really great. Now, the only thing was, did any for the for first two matches, did anyone think that they were going to lose their titles? No, there was like, and if you think about it, there was this entire thing was a titles match, right? This yes. entire show was titles match. This is like Battle of the Belts, right? Apparently, the um, whole show, according to I forget if it was Alvarez or uh, or um, Meltzer said the whole show, the the idea for doing this particular rampage was Brian Danielson's. Really, I mm -hmm. want to hear some sad news about this. What? Uh, the what culture guys were were in. Um, it was Las Vegas, right? They were they were in Vegas for the show, and they said the sad part is people after Dynamite left, and the numbers dwindled, and they missed an amazing rampage. You never know it from that crowd. Well, that's they it. The crowd loud. that was there, the crowd that was there, benefited from it, right? Oh yeah. So 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 that was the only downfall. But I mean, like this match, fan, like you know, the problem is is that. On any card, on any mm -hmm. night, I would have chosen this match as my match for the night. Oh, yeah. But of course, you know what type of matches I like. So obviously the other yep. one. But but fantastic match. Like I like this, yep. I'm, I'm like literally going through it and, and I'm like, okay, this match was great. This match is amazing. Anything you want to add to this match? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, do you anything yes. after it? First of all. I actually like this match a little more than See, the, I, that, I, I said that. Yes, I said that. Because I, Zack Sabre Jr., he's just so good. The refusing to let go of the wrist no matter what Andretti did for the first part of the match. That mm -hmm. was so good. The wrist control. It was just like a clinic and wrist control. That arm bar and the ropes, how he transitioned to it, and then the hanging arm bar on uh, Andretti. I was just like, that is insane. Yeah. Right, Working the arm over, right? I mean, there was a master class in arm destruction, getting out yeah. of a, a carry move with a sleeper. Like, it's just all, the, he's so creative, right? And then that scissored arm bar that he won with, it looked like he freaking was popping right. Andretti's arms out of his sockets. Like, he's just so precise with everything. And he's so funny in the ring, too. Like, yeah, he hilarious. plays like the cocky asshole heel perfectly. But that's right. the thing, right? So when when um he gets put up on the torture rack, I'm mm -hmm. like, why didn't anyone else just strangle the guy like he does? Well, because like, a torture rack is technically like, you know, the Argentine, the torture rack, the backbreaker, yeah. has the guy lying on his back across your shoulders. Mm -hmm. He had him picked up in a more of a fireman's carry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it sure. allowed him to put the arm right around his neck, yeah. right? Because he yeah, wasn't actually over. True. You couldn't really get the leverage because if you're in a yeah. torture rack, you're like, your back your is laid across his shoulders, down, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a lot harder to get a proper, you'd have to roll over in the move to get a yeah. proper choke on. All right, Fair enough, but true. yeah, but you you know you know where this is hopefully going for Forbidden Door, right? And this no, is just I, I mean, Zack Saber Junior versus Orange Cassidy. Oh, gotta be that has to be it, right? Or Ooh. if you don't go that way, Zack Saber Junior versus Swerve Strickland, whoever <gasps> has that title. Oh my god, but, <laughs> that guy's amazing. But I kind of would lean to Orange Cassidy because you want a face champion. You do, you do, right? Because Zack Saber Jr. is not a face. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, no, definitely not. Yes, definitely not. But, uh, but yeah, I think we're gonna get uh, Zack Saber Jr. and Brian Danielson at Wembley. No, yeah, that kind of that kind of makes sense. That's yes. okay. We got, yeah, which we got, is completely fine. Yeah, anyway. we got Omega and Osprey. So yes, exactly. Game. Yep, those are my comments on this match. Cool. Uh, next up was the match I thought was okay. Mm -hmm. Not a bad match. It was the Will Nightingale versus Emi Sakura. I like the fact that obviously they're letting Willow defend her title because it is her title, thanks to well not thanks to but unfortunately due to the injury to Mercedes, uh, to Mercedes, right? Uh, this match was great. Like, you know, Emi Sakura always <laughs> she plays that like heelish, like basically Emi Sakura wrestles the way Emi Sakura has always wrestled. That from what I've seen, right? The heel kind of mentor type of taking advantage, like the eye rake, all, all the stuff that heels do right i felt that you know willow like she's good she's good she's getting better um but but i mean i don't know if like this match was was great with because of emmy because i kind of feel it was um because willow has a certain move set and when she finishes that move set that's it right like she won but i wasn't like again this this is probably my lowest rated match of the night but as I said, watch Rampage. It's it's it, it was fantastic. Just if you have to skip a match, you could technically skip this match. I mean, it's not really something that I I, I would write home about. 
Um, do you have anything else you want to add to this match? It was a good match. I mean, you, 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 your match. your opinion duplicates mine. It was yeah. good. Will and Nightingale was good. Emi Sakura was good. It was a good match. Nothing wrong with it. Um, but it was surrounded by greatness. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And then to end, end the show, Shibata versus Moriarty, Mori- Moriarty, Lee Moriarty for the Ring um, of Honor Pure Championship. For the Ring of Honor Pure Championship, this match was was fun. Um. I, I thought it was interesting that, like, you know, the holes that Moriarty was putting on Sh- Shibata at some points obviously weren't targeted at his neck or anything like that. It was literally like a leg lock and stuff like that. Smart, smart. Mm-hmm. Um, Back and forth. Um, I thought this match was good. I thought it was good. I thought it was really good. Um, I, I The the whole, like, roll-up pin, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I love the fact, like, they were having like uh like like uh, Shibata at the beginning was, like, kind of getting Moriarty into those submissions so that he would get, he would get all his like uh, rope breaks out, right? And I'm like, smart move. That's actually pretty mm-hmm. smart. Didn't even think about that. Um, but like, I mean, again, as I said, this match was 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 good. Um, so this is like my my number three match of out of the four. Um, I'm I'm more excited to what happened after the match and and after the match when Daniel Garcia came out and challenged. I was like, oh damn, like this mm-hmm. <laughs> this I, I would love like regardless of 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 what you think about Daniel Garcia and his new persona. He's a fantastic, fantastic wrestler. And I love his new persona. I listen, Daniel, Daniel Garcia got dance in front of Shibata as much as he wants. That's that's gonna yep. be amazing. But that's the match I'm I'm excited for. I don't know when they're gonna do it. I don't think I saw the graphic or anything for it. Um, but that's what I want next. Yep. Um and this again, this match was great. I thought I thought I thought no, Lee Moriarty is good. He's 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 good. Uh, Shibata is really good. Like, I mean, after Shibata versus Cassidy, I think Shibata versus Cassidy was better than this match. Yes. But um, I thought this match was good. Again, number three out of my of, of the four that we had. Yeah, today. yeah, it was. It would have been my three out of four too. It was. It was a really good match. Very technical match. Mm-hmm. Um, Shibata just playing playing the veteran against yep. a young guy, right? Yep. And just out thinking him, out maneuvering yep. him, and in the end, pinning him. Pinning him. So yeah. yes. <laughs> so that was it. I love the stare down between Garcia and Shibata. It was great. Um, and of course, the shout out to Kevin Bennett for Daniel Garcia's new theme, which is potentially better than his old theme. So, yep. Did you see Being the Elite? Yes, I, I, I yes, I did watch it before I, I, I started. Yes, yes. There's, there's not a whole ton to note on that though. This week is there. There's, no. there's just the, um, the, <laughs> okay, <laughs> the negative one kicking Hangman yep. out of the dressing room because you know he refuses to believe they were in the bathroom, but they were actually They're in actually the bathroom. bathroom. Yeah, he wasn't lying. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. i died watching the hollywood hunk segment this week like <laughs> died laughing if you guys want to see like how good ryan nemeth. ryan nemeth is at comedy his mm-hmm. secret segment they call me the hollywood hunk but i live in encino secrets yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, wanted, he wanted to be a shark rodeo champion more than a professional wrestler but that's not a real thing <laughs> secret he is so funny like it's oh it's, man it's so yeah. weird that him and, like not weird it's just interesting like him how him and Dolph are brothers and yeah. and the personas are so different oh, I know like Nemeth is so funny and it's yeah. you can tell that's just him being him yeah oh, right? yeah the, I drink a hot mug of children's cough syrup instead of coffee in the morning <laughs> <laughs> Man. He's 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 oh. he's so oh he's yep. just oh, oh my goodness. What what did you think of the Bucks with their we have the option of taking one of two life changing contracts thing? So they're talking about the they're talking about food the chilies thing. Well, yeah, yeah, they were yeah. using chilies and Wendy's, their two mm-hmm. favorite restaurants. Mm-hmm. 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 And they said one is one is look at the money the money one is offering look at stuff like that yeah yep. yeah I I thought it's, I thought it's interesting I, I was like you know um and they're asking at the at the end they chose one right they're like oh this is definitely the one to go to and I'm like okay all right and, and I love I love the fact when Matt was like there's one catch you can only choose one of them mm-hmm. right and it's like a, he said like a long term deal or something mm-hmm. like that he says right. And I'm like, all right, you're playing this up on being the elites. Okay. I mean, hey, I did, but the problem is, you know what? I feel like if they're doing this, to be completely honest with you, I feel like Tony Khan's already signed them. Plus, or they're just they're just having a poke at the fans, which they love maybe, doing maybe. in the dirt sheets, maybe. right? Like, guys, read into this, right? right? Because this and, sounds eerily similar to FDR. Oh, we don't know who we're gonna sign with. Like, we have we want to take some time. 
they were signed months before. Like, yeah, of course, right? Like this, this kind of, I, I kind of, I'm getting the same vibe out of this. Mm -hmm. But hey, you're right. Maybe they're just having fun. But somebody tells me they're signed with AW. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they probably will. Um, yeah. but I do think they're just having fun. That's oh, yeah. that's that's, that's how I read this whole thing. Was okay, guys, we get it, we get it. You're, what, what you're, you're poking at the Ch whole thing. Chili's is back, and they're asking. Yes, us for yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was yeah, like, was, oh my god. Yeah, it was pretty funny. And was there anything else on your rampage and AEW stuff? Um, no, no, no. I think that was it. Uh, from the AEW standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. again, the new show is starting in two weeks. Yep. Let's see what we get from there. Yep. Okay. Well, then we are going to take a little journey down the Bushi Road. Nice. And we will start with our look at New Japan's Dominion show that came to us June 4th from Osaka Joe Hall. And I'm not going to talk about every match on the card, but I will note some highlights. Uh, will Ospreay took on Lance Archer. Um, Archer was Lance Archer. He came down, he beat up the young lions at ringside just for something to do before the match. Um, you know, and then he beat the living hell out of Osprey for a good chunk of this match. I mean, it was really Osprey. And look, it's Will Ospreay. So he got a lot of stuff in, of course, still. But I mean, my God. I mean, he, early on, he nailed with a flying forearm and a sky twister to the floor like Osprey, and then hit an Oz cutter for two, but then was turned inside out when he went for the hidden blade. It was just crazy, right? There was there was all kinds of good stuff. I mean, the, the end basically came like Archer hit a choke slam for two after Osprey's arm gave out again. Like this was the thing too. Osprey was selling the hurt arm. But interestingly, Archer never targeted the hurt arm in the match. So yes. <laughs> so he uh, Osprey came back with a kick and the hidden blade but archer kicked out at one when he finally hit the hidden blade so what does osprey do he hit three consecutive hidden blades for the win because he had gone for the stormbreaker earlier and he couldn't get him up because of his arm so like he's selling the arm like it's like a legit injury that people are going to know about which i thought was really cool but he then hit him with three consecutive hidden blades put him down so it was a solid match for the length of it yeah you know, i would have given it three and three quarters um and that's of course when he uh grabbed the mic and uh, talked about it what we uh, said he talked about um kenny omega tjp and francesco akira recaptured the iwgp junior tag team championship from the nice. intergalactic jet setters that's the tag team name of uh, Kushida and uh, and Kevin Knight. It was yeah. a good match. Um, Bullet Club attacked uh, I, the uh, Catch 2-2 after the match. Dan Mahoney and Clark Connors, two loud boos from the crowd. The crowd definitely liked um, TJP and, uh, and Francesco Akira Catch 2-2, recapturing the titles and bringing them home where they belong in the United Empire. Just saying. Question for you before yes. you move on. Yes. Bullet Club Gold, right? Yes. I know they're an opposing force to Bullet Club, whatever. Oh, who yes. knows? Their music they played. That's mm -hmm. the Bullet Club music, right? Yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, Jay White but, has his own theme. Okay, but the music kind of sucks. Like, every time it starts up, I'm like, what is what is playing on the speakers right now? And I'm like, all right. Yeah. I like Jay White's own theme music. It's pretty good. That one that starts off with kind of like the... I can't duplicate it, but it's um yeah that was that was my attempt to do Jay White's theme music. People, this is it's why I don't. Different than one sing. they use today, right? That's oh, yeah. different from yeah yeah. So the guys yeah, like yeah, listening yeah. to them like this music sucks. Yeah yeah but, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, and it, it's the same thing. There was the Clark the one the music that starts up with Clark Connors and Kevin Knight was the generic Bullet Club theme music, oh, okay, which is it. really boring yeah. generic Bullet Club yeah. theme music. So yes, it's pretty bad. Um, but that that appears to be the next program for TJP and Akira, which is fine. Dan Mahoney is is good. Clark Connors is really good. They're both young guys, and it should be a great match. Then we had Zack Sabre Jr., the hardest man in wrestling on the weekend, apparently, um, taking on uh, Jeff Cobb for the uh, New Japan TV Championship. He defended it yet again. Um, this was Jeff Cobb power versus Zack Sabre Jr. technical know-how. This was a good match. The match was back and forth. Both guys hitting and countering with their strengths, blistering pace to start. They exchanged strikes, right? Eventually, a suplex from Zack Sabre Jr. allowed him to take over around the halfway mark. Um, soon, Cobb answered back with a throw of his own, the spin cycle, and a suplex. Cobb tried to finish off Sabre with the Tour of the Islands, his finishing move, but Sabre transitioned it into a pin and squeaked out a win. Zack Sabre Jr., by the way, is now 3 0 and one versus Jeff Cobb so he's never lost to him it was funny too because of course Sabre comes over to the the desk right and Kevin's like you, you defended you defended Kevin Kelly's yelling at him and uh, uh 
Saber goes over to the desk and goes, Kevin, he's so strong. <laughs> he's just too strong. He's quite <laughs> handsome as well. <laughs> I could be a stonemason with my chin. <laughs> but one thing always gets me through, Kevin, mental techers. Nice. Yep. Uh, very quickly, Bishamon reca- uh, recaptured the IWGP World Heavyweight Tag Titles and got the New Japan Strong Tag Team Championship as well. Facing a house of torture and uh, and the uh, United Empire team of Aaron Hanare and Great Ocon. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, they they should they should really allow Aaron Hanare and Jeff Cobb to ever run with the titles or something because they would be very good together. Mm-hmm. Um, David Finley retained the Never Open Weight Championship against El Fantasmo. This was a very typical Bullet Club match. A lot of beating down around the ring. You look like you're about to say something. Sorry, I hate mute. I was, I was, I was gonna say no. I, I, I wanted Al Fantasmo to win, but obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> no, it did not. <laughs> so yes, he did not win the Never Open Way Championship. But this was, uh, this was really. I mean, the match ended when Finley put uh, El Fantasmo through a table, then brought him back in the ring and hit into oblivion. Um, like there was a lot of outside beating down. El Fantasmo had a couple of really solid bursts though in this. A lot of fun stuff. His, his classic offense. Um, Hiromu Takahashi retained uh, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion against the winner of the Super ju- Best of the Super Juniors, Master Wado. Um, good match. These guys, uh, these guys gave it. These guys gave. It. I mean, that's really all I'm going to say because I have so much to cover. But these guys really gave it. I would recommend going out checking this match out. Um, you know, it was. It was. You know, w- Wado wasn't really expected to win. It's not like he's going to be Takahashi for the belt yet. I mean, Hiromo Takahashi's got a way to go. I really hope, though, that Hiromo shows up at Forbidden Door. Is, I can't remember, did um, MGF like someone? He hates it in Japan, but he likes someone. It was Great, a great Okan. Okan. Great okay, Okan. I'm like, yes. I'm like, is it Masa He was being no, a troll. Is that what he's doing? He's being a troll. Oh, yes. okay. Yes. Although, you know, I like Great Okan, but I don't love Great Okan. Do you know who I love? Who's that? The Blackpool Combat Club. <laughs> and they had a match. And this yeah. was chaos. Kazuchika Okada, Tomohiro Ishii, and Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on the Blackpool Combat Club. Shota Umino, John Moxley, and Claudio Castagnoli for the Never Open Weight Six Man Tag Team Championship. This was, as I've mentioned previously, Castagnoli's debut in New Japan. Okada's new thing is the arrogant top guy, kind of heelish, not showing a lot of respect for the young up and comers, right? Like it's, it's so cool. He's got this arrogant swagger to him now. That's just, it's, it's actually a good character and it's a change for him. So he's kind of reinventing himself in this, this image. Now the match started off with Tanahashi and Castagnoli. It was really good. Castagnoli just took it to him. Big strikes. There was a six man breakdown in the middle, but then Claudio maintained control and tagged Umino. Umino demanded to fight Okada, though, who accepted reluctantly and then beat the hell out of Umino outside the ring, threw him into the barricade, over the barricade, then went for a hanging DDT, but Umino reversed, slammed Okada into the rail, into a post, then put a table into Okada's head. So he took a table, unfolded it, then just ran with it and smashed Okada in the head with it. Um, Yeah, and then uh, Mox goes up to Okada as he's lying there and goes, oh, I'm so sorry, Okada, your head... (laughs) Umino then tagged in Mox to a huge, this crowd loved John Moxley. And this starts with the Blackpool Combat Club working Okada over, including Claudio with a deadlift gut wrench that also got a massive reaction from the crowd. Remember, they, some of these people have probably never seen him wrestle before. Um, Mox and Umino hit a heart attack on Okada. Uh, Umino taunted Okada, screaming at him that woke Okada up, and they went back and forth, ending in an Okada DDT, and both are down. Tanahashi got the hot tag against Claudio, took out all three Blackpool Combat Club as they interfered, and then caught Castagnoli's big boot into a dragon screw and tagged Ishii. Now, that was crazy. I mean, he literally caught his boot out of the air and dragon screwed. I mean, Tanahashi, for his age and the fact of where he is, is still amazing in the ring. Then we get Ishii and Castagnoli. So you can imagine how this goes. Vertical su- Ishii ends up hitting a vertical suplex on him, then runs over the other two people, wrecking Umino with the forearm. But then Claudio wrecks Ishii with a torture rack neckbreaker. That's what I'm calling this, because I'm not quite sure what it was. But just 
big suplex type neck breaker. Tag Mox, who comes in, hard punches, bites Ishii's ear, puts him in a figure four. Okada interfered, but Mox takes them both down with Larry. It's a pile driver on Ishii. Tanahashi breaks up the pin. Hammer and anvil elbows then into a sliding lariat for two. Then the bulldog choke, but Ishii gets out with a back suplex. They exchange lariats hard. Then Ishii nails a huge headbutt that split Mox open hard way. So Mox gets hard way blood in this one. I did not see any opportunity he had to like, like if, if he bladed, it was the best hidden blade ever. Then Mox hits a DDT and a curb stomp, but Okada breaks up the pin. The match breaks down again. There was a brawl going on outside the ring. Most of the time, Mox and Ishii were going at it. Tanahashi and Ishii tam- tam- then team up on Mox. Lariat, sling blade, sliding lariat for two. Mox comes back with a cutter. Ishii with a lariat. Both are down again. They finally tag out to Umino and Okada. Okada takes Umino down with a shotgun drop kick and puts him in the money clip. He could have used the Rainmaker, but he sends the message to Umino that you're not worth my finishing move. And uh, so he just puts him in the money clip instead. So Umino reaches the ropes. Okada hits him repeatedly with taunting hits. Umino fires up, but hits a huge drop kick. And then Castagnoli gets the giant swing on Okada. And oh my God, this was one of the best giant swings I've ever seen Castagnoli do. He was, he was rotating them and started to tire out and then was like, no, no worries. And kept going like all of a sudden, all kinds of new energy and just kept rotating. them. I have no idea how many times they went around, but it was a lot. And the crowd was going insane for this. Like, I don't know if I've ever seen him do one quite like this. This crowd was like, just so loud. Then an assisted power bomb from Umino for two. Mox hits a tope to Ishii. Umino hits around the world neck breaker and goes for the Death Rider, but Okada reverses into a backdrop. Umino runs the ropes, but an Okada drop kick, and I mean this man has the best drop kick in wrestling, takes him down. But Umino dodges the Rainmaker, hits the Death Rider, but it's only a near fall. He goes for the Death Rider again, but Tanahashi this time uh, hits a sling blade on him. Twist and shout on Castagnoli left. And then um, Mox gets in, hits a German suplex, uh, for, gets a German suplex from Ishii. All three then ganged up on Umino, ending in an elevated DDT for near fall. Umino tries to come back yelling. Okada screams at him to go for it. Umino does, but Okada reverses into a slam and the Rainmaker, which he then used to put, put Umino mm. down for the three. This match was freaking fantastic and insane i mean these six guys in the ring they put on such an incredible show it was just an amazing match i loved every second of this match the matchups were great they killed each other they hit so many good moves okada was just freaking fantastic in this match like just the stuff he was hitting out of nowhere, the, the way his character was, the storytelling in this match, like the way he just had so much contempt for Umino. It was just, it was great. But then he ends up having to use the Rainmaker to beat him. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. I mean, what a great match. I would have given this like four and three quarter stars easily. So nice. yeah, really good match. Um, then of course we had Danielson challenging Okada. The last match was really good too. Sonata and Yoda Suji. I mean, don't forget, Dominion is basically the New Japan SummerSlam, you know, the New Japan, like, uh, all or double or nothing, whatever you want to call it. I don't know, whatever the next AEW one is, that would be the second biggest show of the year. That's what this is for New Japan. We had Sonata defending his belt against Yoda Suji, who just returned from, um, just returned from excursion. So it's kind of rare to have a guy suddenly thrust into the title picture, but he kind of deserves it. Mm-hmm. Big guy right athletically built charismatic as hell and knows what he's doing with the ring. so yeah this was actually a really good match i i you know i would say that anyone who wants to see uh you know a guy do his thing i mean <laughs> a new guy yoda hit a curb stomp at one point spinning bomb for a near fall he lifted sonata to the top rope and hit a spanish fly yoda suji is not a small man mm. okay uh, Spanish fly for another near fall, hit a leaping headbutt for another near fall, but none of it was enough. Sonata finishing with a moonsault, shining wizard, and a deadlift and a deadfall for the win. We have our G1 lineup that was also Ooh. announced during uh, Dominion. AEW participation, one guy. I know. It's, I yes, <laughs> it's Eddie Kingston. <laughs> so he finally gets to go and participate in the G1. Um, we do have, of course, uh, most of the major uh, major uh, New Japan wrestlers, but also an interesting addition is uh, Kaido Kiyomiya. 
from DDT, who is the guy who got into it with Okada earlier in the year. Oh. And now he's in the G1. So this should be really interesting. So, yeah. And of course, Okada is in the G1. Sonata has said he's going to win the G1 and then pick, hand pick his opponent for uh, Wrestle Kingdom because, you know, he's the champion, right? The, the winner of the G1 goes on to face the champ at Wrestle Kingdom. So, yes, this is why Will Ospreay is winning the G1 this year. So he's my pick. Well, that was New Japan, and we will move over to Stardom, who had their flashing champions uh, show uh, last week. A little, I guess a little later than last week. It was put up on Stardom World last week, though. And uh, I'll just run quick because I realize we have, we've taken an awful lot of time talking about wrestling today. So I'll run through a couple of matches really fast that uh, I think are worth checking out. Um, there was a lot of controversy over this, this pay-per-view. Um, it was not what I would call Stardom's best. Yeah, okay. It was good. It was good. Definitely worth watching, but not their best. Um, we had a Zumi the high-speed champion, taking on Saki Kashima and Fukujin Death in a three-way for the Stardom High-Speed Championship. Now, this was super high-speed from the start. This match was like five and a half minutes long, right? Oh, wow. Okay. Saki and Fukujin are tag partners in the Goddess Tournament, and they were, they're were they both in Oedo Tai, and they worked together at the start. But a moment happened. You know how Izumi does her run from corner to corner? She jumps up onto the top rope and then does a, a, a diving crossbody to the outside. Mm-hmm. So she ran across got up on the turnbuckle on the two feet, like did the jump and her feet went out. Her, she basically took the turnbuckle post in the gut and fell to oh. the floor. Yeah, it was a nasty fall, but she seemed to be okay. She returned to the match after and continued. So, uh, you know, sometimes when you're young, I think that you take hits and it's not quite as bad or something. I have no idea. It looked nasty as hell, but she seems to be okay. Um, Saki and Fujikin fell in the ring, and I'm like, oh, God, please tell me Izumi gets in the ring. That's all I could think about after that was, please get back in the ring. Please get back in the ring. <laughs> um, Saki tried a sneaky pin, though, on Fujikin, so Fujikin dropped her. And then Izumi returned with a double stop off the top rope, so you kind of knew she was fine. Then the match went crazy for speed. The pinfalls, that yeah. poor ref. All six of them were, like, tying each other up and, like, pin, 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 pin. It was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> right near fall after near fall after near fall it was just so well done fukujin then hit a canadian destroyer on izumi for a near fall it was probably the most perfect canadian destroyer i've ever seen executed oh wow okay okay yeah i'm I'm not kidding it was just insane like the rotations everything it was just perfect like if you wanted a textbook canadian destroyer that would be it izumi then went for a springboard but they both kicked her off to the floor and then saki kashima locks the kishi kase on fukujin death and saki kashima is your new high-speed champion ending the incredible reign of izumi who had 12 uh, defenses before this and had been the champion for over 400 days 430 some days i believe oh wow okay yep um but Azumi was pissed. Saki was crying. I mean, like, she's a heel, right? She's like one of the most chicken shit heels on the face of the planet. Crying her eyes out, posing with Rosie Agawa with the title. But I mean, like, legitimately, like, oh my God, this is an amazing moment, right? Because Mm -hmm. she's been in stardom since 2011. She took some time off, but she's been in stardom since 2011. This is her first ever singles championship. Oh, okay. Okay. So she's been there for quite some time. Yes, exactly. And it was a it was a really cool moment to see her get that belt. Now people hated the fact that Izumi was not pinned to lose her belt on that championship run. Now I'm not that upset about it because it's like, well, they probably want to keep Izumi strong for like future runs. Yeah. So you don't want people who are still at the high speed level to pin her. But so yeah, there was the, people weren't happy with this. I like the match a lot though. I would recommend checking it out because it is actually very good. The other one I'm going to talk about on this card, and I mean, there was a lot of good matches on this card. Another good one that you might want to check out was Stars taking on Club Venus. Okay. Um, it was a four-on-four with uh, the team of Mayu Iwatani, Hazuki, and um, Koguma and Hanan defeating the non-Mina Shirakawa members of Club Venus. <laughs> so, um, let's just say that I think that being in stardom is really good for any wrestler because mm-hmm. the women who are in Club Venus who came in and I'm like, man, they look kind of shaky. They're all getting good. I mean, you must have to train your ass off to be in stardom, mm-hmm. right? So I get the feeling that that must be what's going on. Um, stars won, as they should. But it looks like Mayo Iwatani's next challenger for the IWGP title is Mariah May of Club Venus. So, okay. Okay. Mayu's going to kill you. 
anyway. So Mina Shirakawa taking on Tom Nakano. Winner takes both belts. This was for both the Wonder and World of Stardom Championships. Um, this match wasn't as long as some of the previous title matches, but Tam got the advantage early with a knee, sent Mina out of the ring, then hit a diving cross body to the floor to follow up. But as she got back in the ring, Mina hit this perfectly. You know, you, you, you're climbing in the ring through the ropes. Just as she puts her leg over the ropes, Mina drop kicks her knee against the ropes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sends her back to the floor. Right. Then she rips the mat up off the floor, slammed Tam's knee into the concrete, dragged her up on the stage where she went for another knee slam. I mean, when I say slam Tam's knee into the concrete, I mean like picked her up and then dropped her two knees onto the concrete. Right. Like, ow. Anyway, she dragged Tam up the ramp to the stage. She went for another knee slam. Tam fought out, landed a backdrop driver, but then immediately grabbed her own knee and was like limping and crawling to the back to the ring right but mina recovered hit a running drop kick on the crawling tam tam fights back rolls into the ring after planting mina with an elbow but she just lies there holding her knee all right mina's up first engages in seated kicks both of them are kicking each other's head at the same time repeatedly like imagine two people sitting across from each other both drilling each other in the head with boots um Mina gets the better. They get up. Tam hits a roundhouse kick in German, punching her own leg after. So, like, she hits these two kicks, but then immediately starts, like, hitting her own leg to, like, deal with it. Mina catches her leg, though, goes for the figure four. Tam reaches the ropes for it could be fully applied. Mina goes for a dragon screw, but Tam counters with the northern cross, which is, like, this arm bar, arm trap, leg lock combo, which was, like, I love it. But Mina refused to submit, so Tam's, like, fine. Releases the hold, kicks Mina down again, but she's still selling her knee. She goes to the top, but Mina catches her. They fight on the turnbuckle. They slap the hell out of each other. Um, and it, but Mina gets the best of it. Hits an avalanche DD2 for DDT for two. Mina goes for the glorious driver. Mina Tam escapes. Mina nails her with a forearm and an implant DDT for near fall. She then hits the glamorous driver, Mina, which is her finishing move. But Tam kicks out. She lifts her again. Tam escapes, but immediately goes down. So, I mean, she gets out, but then just falls to the ground holding her knee. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Tam struggles. Okay, so what happened? Mina lifts her into an electric chair, does essentially a spinning leg drop on Tam. I don't know what the hell this was, but she spun her around and then dropped her, and her leg was across Tam. Like it was just, it was such a cool move. Tam struggles to reach the ropes, but Mina keeps her in the center, bridges after locking on a figure four. But Tam finally rolls over, reaches the ropes, screaming in pain. As she's like, even after they release the hole, she's just lying there holding the ropes, screaming, holding her knee. Right. Mina sets up for another glamorous driver. Tam reverses again, goes for a lariat, and collapses on her knee. Mina hits a clothesline for the glamorous driver. Mina for a massive near fall. I totally bit on this <laughs> glamorous driver, Mina. I'm like, this has got to be over. Nope. Mina just starts to pound on Tam in frustration. Now as Tam grips her knee, she runs at Tam, but Tam hits a thrust kick, a roundhouse kick, and a tiger driver, but can't cover because she's, guess what? holding her knee, <laughs> just writhing around on the mat. She crawls over to Mina and they get to their feet together, exchanging big forearm shops, shots. Mina comes out on top, but Tam suddenly reverses, hits the tiger suplex, Violet shooting for a one count. Mina just pops up right out of it. Mina springs up and Tam nails another roundhouse, hits the Violet screwdriver, her big finisher, followed by a bridging hammerlock German for the three count. This was really, really good. The story was really well told. The hatred between these two women was clear. Tam just lay on the mat after, and Mina just started to sob. And I mean sob. It was only her second defense. And she was beaten by the woman that she ditched to go off with Club Mina. Wow. Tam just stared at her. I mean, this woman knows facial expressions. She gave her like this death look, and there was a brief flash of sympathy watching her cry. But then it was mm -hmm. death look. And she gets a mic and she says, only in the second time in history that we have a red and white belt champion. After chasing Tam, for, she always speaks about herself in the third person, chasing Tam for a long time, Mina, you can't surpass her. That's reality. I mean, the glare she was giving her was just crazy, right? Mina keeps crying. So Tam limps over, kneels down at her and goes, Mina. And she sounds so sincere. She goes, you can come back to Cosmic Angels if you want with all of Club Venus, and then all of a sudden turns on a dime, but in Cosmic Angels, you'll be number four. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and M Mina just gets a mic. She's like, this is hell all over again. Soon I'll be in hell because I, lear I learned the happiness of having a belt. And she's just like sobbing relentlessly and sobbing so much she's coughing. Oh, you know, wow. like when you cry so hard, you're coughing. But then she goes, but I'm Mina Shirakawa. I'm not going to let myself down. Now she's like 
sort of like almost hulking up, right? Not getting to her knees angry. She goes, I'll beat Tam next time. Coming back to Cosmic Angels, being fourth in line, don't you dare fuck with me. And she lightly shoves Tam and rolls out of the ring. And Tam just says, bye. <laughs> and then Mariah comes out and challenges her for just the white belt. And Tam was like, you don't want both? And she's like, no, I want to focus on the white belt. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Fine. Tam just looks amused. She goes, you're still a goo goo gaga baby is essentially what she said, according to the translation. <laughs> so I'll, I'll show you the true strength of someone who overcomes setbacks. Because apparently Mariah was making fun of how old Tam is, right? And she's like, yeah, okay. Anyway, that was Tam getting both titles. So now Tam Nakano, leader of Cosmic Angels, holds both of the major championships, only the second person in stardom history to do that, the first being Mayu Iwatani. Mm. So the only the second person in all of stardom history to hold both belts simultaneously. So it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, I, just, I love her so much. Like the more I watch her, the better she gets. And Saki Kashima with the high speed championship, so good. <laughs> I mean, it was just such a good show for those reasons. You know, people were complaining about the booking, but I don't hate it. I, I I trust that they know where they're going with everything. So, I mean, people were like, but Minu just got the belt. It was only her second title defense. She is the shortest reigning white belt champion in stardom history. Oh, wow. Oh, well, she's the leader of Club Venus. What do you want, right? I mean, <laughs> tell her to change her theme music. Maybe she'll do better. But anyway, the uh, yeah, I, I actually really like the show a lot. Not my favorite stardom show I've ever seen, but a really good show and definitely worth checking out. Hmm. So anyway, that is the journey down Bushi Road for this week. And that brings us to our matches and wrestlers of the week. Krishna, what is your match of the week? Um, I'm going to get match of the week to the first match on Rampage, which I which I loved. I absolutely love this. I just, Kel like, my, Surprise. My, my kind of match. Um, I thought all three guys were fantastic um, doing their lucha thing. So I'm going to give uh, Vikingo versus Jalistico uh, versus why do you keep forgetting the last person? Um, Commander. Commander. Yeah, I'm going to give them match of the week. I am completely not surprised. Um, <laughs> these are these are your guys. This is your yep. kind of match. Um, I gave match of the week to the Blackpool Combat Club taking on Okada, Tanahashi, and Ishii because that's my kind of match. Mm -hmm. It was so good. You've already heard ad nauseum about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I would say if anyone wants to check out just one match from Dominion, I would say that's your that match. One. That one right there. Because it was just, it was it was like perfectly choreographed anarchy in places and just the moves. These six guys, my God. And showed Umino standing toe to toe. It's clear he's learning from Mox. Like he's like yeah. learning to, like he belongs perfectly in the Blackpool Combat Club. Like he's learning to swagger and stuff with them. And, you know, and they, they all came up. Oh, the one thing I forgot about you, you know that Mox's music in New Japan is totally different, right? No, it's, it's much more of a metal song. Okay. And it's so good. I mean, his music is just so much better when he comes out. Even his entrance video is better. It's got him like, like cutting into a table with like, I, I can't remember if it's a piece of glass or a knife. And he's just like carving things in this metal table with it. And yeah, I don't know. It's just everything about it to me is just better. So yeah, I, I wish they'd come out through the crowd to that and not Wild Thing, but okay. Wild Thing's fine. Who is your wrestler of the week? Uh, I'm giving it to Vikingo. I thought he was he was fantastic in in the the showing. Um, yeah, I, I, there must be they must be building to something else. But man, this match was great, and he 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 shone in this match. So, yeah, I I Vikingo easily. Wow, that's that's two Vikingos this year. I know. Krishna. Yep. Nice. He's, he's well on his way to being Krishna's wrestler of the year, except for Kenny Omega. Except for Omega, yeah, he's not yes. there. That's, that's isn't that always the way it is? It's like yeah. the, it's it's the wrestler of the year award except Kenny. If yeah, if, if Kenny's not included, who would you give wrestler of the year? <laughs> exactly. Well, my my wrestler of the week is Claudio Castagnoli for his yeah. show in that match. I mean, my God, this guy his first match ever in New Japan, and he went out there and put on a Claudio Castagnoli clinic. I mean, uppercuts. It's because don't forget, we're talking New Japan mm -hmm. where it's and you're fighting Ishii. It is stiff as heck. And Claudio gave 
and gave and, and took and took and took and it was just wow and this dude his strength that giant swing i was just so impressed with him on his debut there and it was just like they even commented they're like for those of you who may be new to new japan you're wondering we recognize this guy you know he was cesaro in wwe and, I, and he goes <laughs> he debuted in aew almost a year ago at forbidden door and I was like, oh, yeah, he has only been in AEW for a year. Yeah. And and I was thinking, I was like, you know, over that past year, he's gone from being like a guy that, you know, when he was Cesaro, he was OK, but kind of boring to like, holy crap, this guy kicks ass. Right. And I mean, he really gave it the ring for this. So that's why for me, he is my wrestler of the week. Good choice. And that, though, brings this rather lengthy episode since we had, you know, what's nice about this, though, the last time we had a long episode, we spent all this time talking about things like CM Punk mm-hmm. and like problems in AEW. All we did was talk about wrestling, you know, yeah, like good sure. wrestling, yeah, good stuff. There was like nothing negative on this show. Nope. Right. So, I mean, to me, that's worth the hour and a half, guys. So we mm-hmm. hope you all enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed talking about it. So anyway, that does, however, bring us to a close. And as the man who's gone to Japan, apparently, always says, goodbye, everybody, and good night. Bang. Good night, everyone.